So the next thing I thought is a little art project. Um, I just took some green paper. Again, you can color your own green paper. You can use tissue paper, green uh, wrapping paper, anything, anything you want to make little circles that look like lily pads. I'm going to set them inside my pool right now just because I have it sitting here. And I'm just going to set these down on the paper, on the blue paper. And then what I did is I took coffee filters and I made mine small because my lily pads are small. Um, but you can make a giant lily pad if you want and use the full coffee filter if you have smaller coffee filters. Um, or you can use tissue paper. White tissue paper works great for that too because it, it can easily, you can color on it. And all I did was take a marker and just colored all over it. So I just scribbled all over it. Maybe dot, dot, dot. If you have, if you have dot, dot bingo dabbers, those work great too. Um, just make sure it's washable so it comes off the kids. So all I did was color all over it. And then what I did with mine, which I'm not going to show you right now because I don't have, um, I'm not in the kitchen where I can handle the mess. So then I took it and I actually, this is the same thing prior, um, only it was pink, I think. And I just dropped some water on it and then it kind of ran all over it and it became this colorful thing. Um, and then I just kind of squished it up into a flower shape to go on the lily pad. And then you can tape it or glue it, whatever you have handy, but make sure your um, coffee filter dries first. Otherwise it will not stick to the tape, of course, or glue, because it'll be too wet. Um, so then I just pushed it on top of there and I made a little lily pad. Um, I used one with a red marker and like I said, these are Crayola washable markers. I just scribbled on them and then dripped some water on and made a little purple one. And like I said, you just take it after, um, you can actually crumple it up while it's still a little bit wet and then let it dry and then just hook it onto your lily pad. Let me hook another one on here. And then you have lily pads. Whoops, that one didn't want to stick. So you have two lily pads then. Um, and again, you can take pretend frogs if you have them and you can stick them on permanently or you can have the frogs jump off and on the lily pads. Um, you can use the toy frogs, whatever you want just to play with it. But it's just a cute little activity, especially if you put the frog on there and save it as an art project. It's kind of cute, a little frog on top of the lily pad. So that's that project you can do just to kind of, you can sing the song and do it and they can be jumping off their lily pads into the, you can change the words and jump off the lily pad into the pond. So that's that one. And then there's another one I wanted to show you um, to work on some fine motor skills. And to make this more, to make it easier and faster for you guys, I'm using tape. Um, but if I was really making this, I would probably use glue. If I was doing it at school, I'd be definitely using glue. Um, looks like I've lost one of my, oh, there's my another one. So all I had was a, I had an empty raisin container um, that I had just finished and I saved it. You can use anything. It can be bigger, it can be smaller, it can be a Parmesan cheese container, whatever you have. Um, and then I actually took a piece of green paper and I wrapped it around it. That's all I did. I just wrapped it. And again, I wrapped it all around the container and then I just, it's taped. Let's get some more tape. My tape's not sticking. Again, I just taped mine on to make it faster. And then um, the lid, which is perfect, these have green lids. I cut out a little shape like a mouth for the frog's mouth. So they have a little mouth. And then I put that back on there. So we need now to make some eyes. So what I used for eyes is I had empty um, disposable floss containers. So I just put some tape on those for right now. Like I said, I'd use glue if that was if it was permanent. And I colored a little bit of a color on there so it looked like an eyeball. And I'm just gonna put it on the top of my container. So you see, I have frog eyes. See, my, there's my frog. Now my frog just needs a long tongue because that's how frogs catch their, their bugs. So for that, um, and I'm sure you guys did this when you were younger. So you just take and you can put it around a pencil or um, you can use a marker, anything skinny, and you're just gonna wrap it and twist it and your kids can help. Maybe they can be the turner while you hold it onto it and then you just wrap it really tight. Um, and then you make your tongue. So, and then you stick the tongue just right there at the very top of your frog. There we go. And there's your tongue sticking out. So now you have a frog that can eat some eat some bugs. So if you don't have any play bugs at home, which I don't have any play bugs at home because my bugs are all at school. Um, but I do have some, just some small kitchen tongs. So if your child is able to use the tongs and pinch them closed, that's great. If they can't do that, they can use their hands to practice that pincher grasp, which is really great for later writing. It works on strengthening those fine motor skills. So because I don't have little bugs though, I have these little binder clips and we're gonna pretend like they're little butterflies. 
So I have little butterflies or bees or whatever you want to call them, but they're little bugs for me, flies maybe. And what you can do is your child can, like I said, they can use the um, tongs if they can do it and they can feed the frogs. Yum, 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 yum. Or if they can't do that, they can pick up the bugs and still it's good fine motor work because they're using their pinchograph as well as aiming for the hole in there, which is a pretty big hole. Um, you can make it smaller if your kids need a better challenge, make it a little smaller hole for the frog's mouth. Um, and that's it. And then you could just put, if you don't have um, little bugs or anything like that, anything small that you have, um, it's not something you're going to leave your kids to have with. This is something you're going to do with them unless, you know, they're not putting things in their mouth anymore, then you can use um, anything you want. But anything small that they can pick up, um, you can use other manipulatives, other little toys they might have that go with toys that they have. Um, pretty much anything. You can even make, um, we could even make balls out of paper, right? Crumple up a ball. It could be a bug. And again, it could practice picking it up and pushing it in. So again, you don't have to have anything fancy to do it. It can just be anything you can make around the house, which is what I'm trying to show you guys that you can pretty much do it with anything. All right, so that was the end of our, our two little projects. And I'm going to do one more video with this little poem and I'm going to make a puppet to go with it. Um, and that will be the end of our activities for this week.